Solomon was building his own house thirteen years, and he finished his entire house. He built the house of the forest of Lebanon. Its length was a hundred cubits, and its breadth fifty cubits, and its height thirty cubits. And it was built upon three rows of cedar pillars, with cedar beams upon the pillars. And it was covered with cedar above the chambers that were upon forty-five pillars, fifteen in each row. There were window frames in three rows, and window opposite window in three tiers. All the doorways and windows had square frames, and window was opposite window in three tiers. And he made the hall of pillars. Its length was fifty cubits, and its breadth thirty cubits. There was a porch in front with pillars, and a canopy before them. And he made the hall of the throne, where he was to pronounce judgment. Even the hall of judgment, it was finished with cedar from floor to rafters. His own house, where he was to dwell, and the other court back of the hall, was of like workmanship. Solomon also made a house like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken in marriage. All these were made of costly stones, hewn according to measure, sawed with saws, back and front, even from the foundation to the coping, and from the court of the house of the Lord to the great court. The foundation was of costly stones, huge stones, stones of eight and ten cubits, and above were costly stones, hewn according to measurement, and cedar. The great court had three courses of hewn stone round about, and a course of cedar beams. So had the inner court of the house of the Lord, and the vestibule of the house. And King Solomon sent and brought Hiram from Tyre. He was the son of a widow of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in bronze. And he was full of wisdom, understanding, and skill for making any work in bronze. He came to King Solomon and did all his work. He cast two pillars of bronze. Eighteen cubits was the height of one pillar, and a line of twelve cubits measured its circumference. It was hollow, and its thickness was four fingers. The second pillar was the same. He also made two capitals of molten bronze, to set upon the tops of the pillars. The height of the one capital was five cubits, and the height of the other capital was five cubits. Then he made two nets of checker work, with wreaths of chain work, for the capitals upon the tops of the pillars, a net for the one capital, and a net for the other capital. Likewise, he made pomegranates, in two rows, round about upon the one network, to cover the capital that was upon the top of the pillar. And he did the same with the other capital. Now the capitals that were upon the tops of the pillars in the vestibule were of lily work, four cubits. The capitals were upon the two pillars and also above the rounded projection, which was beside the network. There were two hundred pomegranates in two rows round about, and so with the other capital. He set up the pillars at the vestibule of the temple. He set up the pillar on the south and called its name Jachin, and he set up the pillar on the north and called its name Boaz. And upon the tops of the pillars was lily work. Thus the work of the pillars was finished. Then he made the molten sea. It was round, ten cubits from brim to brim, and five cubits high, and a line of thirty cubits measured its circumference. Under its brim were gourds for thirty cubits, compassing the sea round about. The gourds were in two rows, cast with it when it was cast. It stood upon twelve oxen, three facing north, three facing west, three facing south, and three facing east. The sea was set upon them, and all their posterior parts were inward. Its thickness was a hand breadth, and its brim was made like the brim of a cup, like the flower of a lily. It held two thousand baths. He also made the ten stands of bronze. Each stand was four cubits long, four cubits wide, and three cubits high. This was the construction of the stands. They had panels, and the panels were set in the frames and on the panels that were set in the frames were lions, oxen, and cherubim. Upon the frames, both above and below the lions and oxen, there were wreaths of beveled work. Moreover, each stand had four bronze wheels and axles of bronze, and at the four corners were supports for a laver. The supports were cast with wreaths at the side of each. Its opening was within a crown which projected upward one cubit. 
Its opening was round, as a pedestal is made, a cubit and a half deep. At its opening there were carvings, and its panels were square, not round. And the four wheels were underneath the panels. The axles of the wheels were of one piece with the stands, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half. The wheels were made like a chariot wheel. Their axles, their rims, their spokes, and their hubs were all cast. There were four supports at the four corners of each stand. The supports were of one piece with the stands. And on the top of the stand, there was a round band, half a cubit high, and on the top of the stand, its stays and its panels were of one piece with it. And on the surfaces of its stays and on its panels, he carved cherubim, lions, and palm trees, according to the space of each, with wreaths round about. After this manner, he made the ten stands, all of them were cast alike, of the same measure and the same form. And he made ten lavers of bronze, each laver held forty baths, each laver measured four cubits, and there was a laver for each of the ten stands. And he set the stands, five on the south side of the house, and five on the north side of the house. And he set the sea at the southeast corner of the house. Haram also made the pots, the shovels, and the basins. So Haram finished all the work that he did for King Solomon on the house of the Lord. The two pillars, the two bowls of the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars, and the two networks to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars. And the four hundred pomegranates for the two networks, two rows of pomegranates for each network, to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were upon the pillars, the ten stands and the ten lavers upon the stands, and the one sea and the twelve oxen underneath the sea. Now the pots, the shovels, and the basins, all these vessels in the house of the Lord, which Haram made for King Solomon, were of burnished bronze. In the plain of the Jordan the king cast them, in the clay ground between Succoth and Zerathan. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighed, because there were so many of them. The weight of the bronze was not found out. So Solomon made all the vessels that were in the house of the Lord, the golden altar, the golden table for the bread of the presence, the lampstands of pure gold, five on the south side and five on the north before the inner sanctuary, the flowers, the lamps, and the tongs of gold, the cups, snuffers, basins, dishes for incense, and firepans of pure gold, and the sockets of gold for the doors of the innermost part of the house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the nave of the temple. Thus all the work that King Solomon did on the house of the Lord was finished, and Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated the silver, the gold, and the vessels, and store them in the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law, and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities, and give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, for your ordinances are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your righteousness give me life. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I shall have an answer for those who taunt me, for I trust in your word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your ordinances. I will keep your law continually, forever and ever, and I shall walk in liberty, for I have sought your precepts. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings, and shall not be put to shame, for I find my delight in your commandments, which I love. I revere your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. The Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight, and he said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? There was a division among them. So they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. 
The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight, and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But how he now sees we do not know. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess him to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you too want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is a marvel. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who speaks to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this, and they said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. The Book of Kings narrates in elaborate detail the building of Solomon's palace, as well as the temple and its many instruments for worship. As a dark hint of things to come, the narrator mentions that it took Solomon seven years to build the temple, but thirteen to build his own house. The priests used the sacred objects described in today's reading for worship in the temple, for stoking the fire on the altar, for ritual washings, for blood rituals, and for animal sacrifices. The temple worship of God was meant to go hand in hand with obedience to the law and lead to a spiritual life free from fear. I shall walk in liberty, for I have sought your precepts. Jesus demonstrates that his opponents are spiritually blind to the true meaning of God's law, revelation, and the temple worship. The blind man has greater sight than the Pharisees. One thing I know that though I was blind, now I see. The blind man professes faith in Jesus, but the others reject Jesus and are judged. For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may become blind. Are you attentive to the small details in your life and how they can serve God, or are there blind spots that need healing?